Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 94. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says we are to divide 90, we are to divide 90 into two parts. We are to divide 92 into two parts such that 5 times the greater number, 5 times the greater, exceeds 300 by the same amount as 10 times the smaller number falls short of 250. We have to understand the language here. The language sometimes can, get, can be a little bit intimidating, sometimes it can be a little confusing, but trust me there is not, not much into it. We just, we just have to put in the time. There is not much in it, we just have to put in the time, don't get intimidated. So let's begin our process. First let's define our variable. Let's define our variable. We're going to start by defining here's the solution. Let g, we're going to start by defining our greater number. Let g be the greater number. Be the the greater part, if you like. Not greater number, but not the greater part, because what it is what it is telling us is that we're going to divide 90 into two parts, hence a greater part. If g is the greater part, if g is the greater part, again, if it makes it easier for you, think of this as a number here. If you were to define this greater part as 70, divide 90 into two parts, such as the greater part is 70. If the greater part is 70, then the smaller part would have to be how much? If you, if you take a number and divide it up into two parts, and the number happens to be 90, and you break it up into two parts, and one part happens to be 70, what's the other part? What's the smaller part? Well, obviously the smaller part is 20. The question is, how did you find 20? You found 20 by subtracting the greater part, 70, from the total. So, if g represents the greater part, that implies that the smaller part, the smaller part must be, must be the total minus the greater part, which we are saying g here, which we are representing here with letter g. And we can see here by substituting number here, it makes sense. I'm going to erase this now because we don't want to confuse ourselves. So that's how we represent the smaller part. Now it goes on, goes on to say that if you were to take 5 times the greater part exceeds 300 by the same amount as 10 times the smaller part falls short of 250. 5 times the greater part exceeds 300. Again, if this is giving you, if, 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 if this is giving you a little bit difficulty, I'm going to put this ar around the box here so that you can see what to ignore here. Ignore this part and make up a number for this part. Obviously this part has a value. 5 times the greater part has a value. Make up any number as long as it's more than 300. So let's pretend that this is 320. How much does 320 exceed 300? If somebody were to come up to you and ask you how much does 320 exceed 300? How would you find it? Of course 320 exceeds 300 by 20 of course. How did you find it? You took the greater part and you subtracted 300 from it. Except here it's not the greater part, it is 5 times the greater part. The greater part is G. If you take a 5 times that amount, that amount exceeds 300. By how much? By this amount minus the 300. And this is this amount is going to be this amount is going to be the same amount as this lower quantity. Let's look at this part. 10 times, 10 times the smaller part falls short of 250. Again, I'm going to put this around the box here in the red, red, red container here so you can see it. Think of this again as a number. And again, in this case, that number has to be, that number here has to be less than 250. How do we know it has to be less than 250? Because it falls short. So let's pretend this is 240. If I were to come up to you and ask you how much does 240, how much does 240 fall short of 250? Of course the answer is 10. 240 falls short of 250 by 10. How did you find 10? You took your 250, you took your 250 and you subtracted this amount, the smaller part. Except here it is not the smaller part, it is 10 times the smaller part. So 10 times the smaller part, 10 times S, the smaller part. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. But we know what the smaller part is. Smaller part is right here, 90 minus G. 
but we'll get to that in a second. We'll make the substitution in a second. And what about what's the relation between these two quantities? The amount by which the amount by which five times the greater part exceeds 300, which is this amount right here, and the amount by which the 10 times the smaller number falls short of 250, we are told that these two amounts are equal by the same amount. They are equal to each other. Very good equation. Here we have two variables. As you can see, we have a greater number and a smaller number. Obviously, we cannot solve an equation. We cannot solve for two variables with one equation. But of course, in reality, we know that we do not have two variables. We only have one variable. We just have to make a substitution for the greater part because we know what the greater part is. The greater part, the greater part is g, and the smaller part, therefore, in turn, will be 90 minus g. Here is the smaller part. We're going to put this in place of that, and then we'll have one, one equation, one variable. Let's replace this s with 90 minus g. That's it. The rest is downhill. It's a simple linear equation, one variable, one unknown, nothing to it. It might take some time. It might take some effort. It might turn out to be tedious. It might turn out to be laborious, but it is not difficult. It's one thing for something to take time because it's very tedious and it requires a lot of labor. Something being laborious is not some, some, it's not the same as something being challenging intellectually. It's a very simple thing. Let's do it out. Let's open the parentheses first. 90 times 10 is going to be 900. So we're going to get 250 minus 900 and then negative 10 times negative g. Negative and negative is going to become positive and we end up with 10g here. And here we have 5g minus 300. Now, here's what you have to decide what you want to do. If you were to bring this 10g here, if you were to bring this 10g here, because of the fact that this is 5g, when you bring this 10g here, it becomes negative 10g. You're going to end up with a negative coefficient of the unknown. I don't like having a negative coefficient for the unknown. I prefer to have positive coefficient. So instead of bringing 10g to the left hand side, I'm going to bring the 5g to the right hand side by subtracting 5g from both sides. Negative 5g here, negative 5g here, and then this positive 5g and negative 5g is gone. We're going to do it in red ink so you can see it. What else do we have to do? So now that we have brought, now that we have brought the variables to that side, we must bring the numbers on that side. 250 minus 900. 250 minus 900 is how much? 200 minus 900 would have been negative 700, so it's going to be negative 650. It's going to be negative 650. So 250 minus 900 and negative 650, let's put it here so that we don't have to do it in two steps. This is negative, negative 650. Negative 650. 250 minus 900. We have to bring this thing to that side. How do we do that? By adding 650 to both sides. And now we can get rid of this negative 650 from both sides, from, from the negative 650 is going to kill the positive 650. What are we left with here? We have positive, five, positive 10g and a negative 5g, negative 5g, positive 10g and negative 5g is going to give us 5g, which I'm going to put it here, closer to the equal sign, just sort of putting it way over there. And here, negative 300 and a positive 350, negative 300 and positive 650 is going to give us positive 350, which means g is simply 350 divided by 5, 35 has 7, five, seven fives, and then we have the 0 here which goes up on the top, so it's 70. The greater number is 70. If the greater number is 70, because they add up to 90, because we were dividing 90 into two parts, if greater number is 70, that implies the smaller number must be 20. What is left at this point, what is left at this point is the fact that we need to verify to make sure that we did not make a boo-boo that this in fact is the right answer. So let's do the verification. Where can we do the verification? I don't want to raise anything. Let's squeeze the verification right in this area here, right in this corner here. Watch what happens. That, that was negative 5, that's not what I meant to do. That was negative 5 here. Let's squeeze it right in here. So what was, what was going on? What was going on is that we had 90. We broke it up into two parts. The larger part turned, turned out to be 70. The greater part turned out to be 70. And the smaller part therefore would have to be 20. Now let's see what the problem tells us. The problem tells us that if you were to take 5 times the greater part, 5 times 70, which is 
350, they're telling us that the amount by which this part exceeds 300, the amount by which this, this number, 350, exceeds 300, how much does 350 exceed 300? 350, 5 times the greater part, 5 times the greater part, 5 times the greater part exceeds 300 by 50. It exceeds 300 by 50. They're telling us that 5 times the greater part exceeds 300 by the same amount as 10 times the smaller number falls short of 250. Let's find out what 10 times the smaller part is. The smaller part is right here. 10 times the smaller part is 200. And how much do you suppose 200 falls shy, falls short of 250? 10 times the smaller number, the smaller number turned out to be 20, and therefore 10 times 20, which is 200, falls short of 250 by the exactly the same amount. It falls short of 250 by 50. One more time, you see, you can clearly see here, 5 times the greater part, 5 times the greater part exceeds 300 by the same amount as 10 times the smaller part falls short of 250. Voila. Bye now.